Uh, okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Ben Russell and I'm the photography and art teacher at the High School of Fashion Industries. And today we're here with a leading industry expert uh, and photographer, Sophie Elgort. So first of all, I just wanna thank you for taking uh, the time, especially at this time in history, <laughs> to talk with me and uh, share your career advice with our students. As you know, we're a career and technical education school, uh, one of about 50 or so in New York City and connecting our students with industry professionals and work-based learning experiences is at the heart of what we do at our school. And I think you're obviously, you know a little bit about that, about that because you've worked with our students uh, with the Through Our Lens partnership. So uh, I'm gonna start by asking you some questions about your career. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, <laughs> all right. So um, first of all, I mean, you, start by telling us what you do exactly, but, uh, and also answering how long have you been in this position or in this industry? So I am a photographer and filmmaker, and I have been working in this industry for about 10 years now. Okay. And uh, what is a typical work day like, which is a funny question right now, obviously, because none of us are having typical work days, but what would a typical work day before quarantine be like for you? So even before now, the typical workday is always different. Um, the, I'm primarily a fashion photographer. So most of my clients are brands and magazines, like fashion-based brands and magazines. Um, and I also do film, like little mostly fashion films um, as well. So every day is different. I was actually, when I was making notes based on your questions earlier, I was writing down, you know, I thought there'd maybe be like three or four different types of days and then all of a sudden I realized, you know, some days you're on set in a studio on a photo shoot, you know, for a brand. Some days you're on location. So you could be somewhere in New York City, you know, say in a park shooting, or you could be traveling somewhere um, either in the country or out of the country. And so some of the days, you know, you're traveling to get somewhere. Um, some of the days you're doing location scouting, so you're looking at different options for, for where the shoot might take place. Um, some days you're at your desk and it's less fun and you're doing the invoices after a shoot and you're following up with people and you're working on the post-production. So you're collaborating with like video editors and, and, and retouchers and you're going back and forth and you're making notes and you're talking to the client to make sure that everything sort of is coming out from the shoot how you want it. Um, and then other things are uh, prepping for shoots. So, you know, before a shoot, you're really talking about what they're looking for and you're getting ready creatively so you know what you're gonna do. You're placing equipment orders, you're putting your team together. You're talking to hair and makeup artists. You're talking to stylists. Um, you what else? Sometimes there's press around photo shoots now because everybody wants you know a story around it. So sometimes you're doing interviews. Sometimes there's events for something if it's a launch. Um, sometimes you're working on your website, keeping it updated. You know, working on the design. Um, sometimes you're sharing your work on social media. I mean, you just like every day that you're sort of not on set, you're sort of making sure that everything else in your business is moving so that the days that you are on set, you don't have to worry about it. Um, showing work to your gallery, working with a printer, making fine art prints, you know, it's sort of endless and you can be creative and, and sort of make your, your work days look how you want to sort of shape your career. So that's one of the coolest parts about it. Yeah, I think, uh... That's a great answer. I think uh, a lot of people don't realize how much people who work for themselves actually do. Because yeah. uh, I was a professional photographer too for many years before I was a teacher. And it's so much of the job is what you said, doing invoicing, getting new clients, a lot of, you know, you really wear a lot of different hats. So with that in mind, what would you say you like best about your job and also least about your job? And what are, what are the reasons for that? So I really love being on set. Um, I love collaborating with different creative people. So as I mentioned, you get to collaborate with art directors and stylists and hair and makeup and all different, all different types of people, not to mention like the subjects that you get to photograph. Um, you're often meeting really interesting people. Um, a lot of my shoots end up 
focusing on sort of real people as the subjects. So there are anyone from, you know, an actor, but then also a designer, or maybe it's somebody who's like a politician, or it's, you know, it's all different types of people. So you're really getting to meet all these different people and talk to them and learn about what they do. Actually, recently, I had the opportunity to photograph um, an astronaut. So that was crazy, oh, wow. like a female astronaut. She spent the most days out of anyone um, in space. And that was like a wild experience for me because I've never gotten to speak person to person with an astronaut. Um, so I felt like I had a lot to learn from her. Um, so I love that part. I don't love the invoicing part, you know, following up with people, keeping track to make sure that things are paid, keeping up with your bookkeeping, you know, all of that sort of like nitty gritty stuff is, is not the most fun part, but you know, you kind of have to do it. So, it's okay. Yeah. So how did you, what led you to be in this career? How did you come, how did you come to, to be a photographer? So my dad is actually a photographer, um, but that is not the main reason why I became one. I always did it because of him as a hobby. He always had cameras around the house and I was growing up sort of at the time where there was still, he was still shooting film, but there was digital also, but it was very new. Um, definitely not digital on phones, like digital, digital cameras. Um, so I was always taking pictures of friends and, and making them dress up in my mom's clothes probably and directing scenes. And I would take my camera everywhere with me. And then I graduated from college. I had another job. I sort of had a whole plan. I was pre-med. I was interning at a hospital, you know, working and, um, I, friends of mine had started this sort of e-commerce like fashion business and they needed pictures and they knew that I was always doing it. And so they sort of said, hey, would you be willing to do our pictures? We'll give you clothes. And I was right out of school and I thought that was a great idea to get some free clothes. And so I started doing their pictures. And then um, from there, just it kind of spiraled. I had other people who saw the pictures because, you know, the photo credit, and it was right when social media was starting, and other people started saying, oh, cool, like, will you do my pictures? And so I still had my other job, and I sort of decided to put up a website and build a portfolio, and and then I, yeah, I got, I started doing it full time. So That's cool. So thinking about, yeah, thinking about being a photographer, working as a photographer, uh, what kind of interests and abilities and skills do you think help a person be successful as a photographer? I mean, definitely you got to know how to use a camera, but I think that's not something that, you know, you have to spend years studying. I, I think, you know, obviously experience is great doing it and, but definitely um, storytelling, being interested in people. If you're, if you're photographing people, you can also do landscape or product photography, um, which you don't need to then deal with people. But um and definitely just also being like especially if you work as a commercial photographer being able to collaborate with people and take direction and you know bring your own vision to it but also understand like what they're looking for and be sort of pleasant and easy to work with um showing up on time you know that type of stuff which seems really mm -hmm. really simple and is simple but you'd be surprised how many people just don't do that right uh you mentioned technical knowledge like learning how to use a camera and probably lighting and things like that which you yeah. might be able to learn in school uh what other kinds of like education or training or experience do you feel is necessary so definitely lighting is great i think a lot of it you can sort of learn on set as you're coming up um, learn by doing i think it's great to like have fundamentals in a course um so you sort of know how to turn on the lights and do all of that stuff. But then just by like seeing how different people are using the lights and using light and what type of light you like for your own work, that's really through experience. Um, I think learning Photoshop is, is pretty important. Like, I don't think you have to be a pro, but being able to do certain things like that just come up all the time. I can't even think of what they are right now, but even just like adjusting your own, color and contrast i mean just little things when a, when an image comes out raw and knowing how to load your images it's things that i don't even think about but 
they're obviously really important. Um, image sharing, figuring out, you know, I use Dropbox as image share, but figuring out your systems like that and, and what really works for you. Um, and something else that I think is more and more coming up, um, at least like in the last five years for me is, is doing video. So a lot of people ask for video now too. So that was something that I never studied, but I really had to like learn almost on the job and learn from people and sort of do online like little classes or you, you know, learn on YouTube. I just had to sort of learn it because people would then say, oh, you know, not only can you photo photograph the stills, but we also want like a little one minute video. Uh, right. So video editing would be great. That's something that I currently outsource, but I would love to be better at myself and I'm definitely working on. Um, yeah, anything that like can sort of give you an edge, a, uh, something that's like a skill that not everyone might have. And it's really cool. Like if I have someone who's interviewing to work with me and they know how to video edit or like they know how to do Photoshop, that's a huge benefit. That's good to hear because our students learn how to do Photoshop at our school. They actually get a certification in Adobe Photoshop and they leave the school with that certification. They can put it on their resume. So that's amazing. Uh, they're learning it, that. Yeah. That's amazing. And it's not only amazing, like, as if you want to, you know, be a photographer, like a freelance photographer, but it's amazing for other um, jobs that, so say you work for a brand and you do their social media. And so you are a photographer, you're creating content for them, but you're working for a brand or something, but then you are also the person who can do your own like Photoshop or your own video edit or whatever. That's so attractive to a brand. So now you've been doing this for a while. Uh, what advice would you give, you know, a student or a young person who's interested in, in being a photographer or, or, you know, being in this creative field that you're in? I think really like getting to know your style and and just by doing it. I mean, the only way you can really like figure out what you want and and what your sort of images look like is by just doing it and doing it and it's going to evolve and it's going to keep going. But, you know, just keep taking pictures. It doesn't really matter like what you decide. Like right now is obviously a crazy strange time, but you know, figure out what you can photograph and and what you want to be taking pictures of and put it out there. Um, yeah, getting your work out there so people can see it and being creative and you may try something and think it's terrible and that's okay. Um, mm. But just like keep on trying to create. That's great. So yeah, speaking about right now, technology, like here we are on a computer screen when you would actually normally be at our school speaking to a room of students. Uh, and thinking about technology, how, how's technology, how have you seen it change the, your job? And, and also thinking ahead, what do you see in the future in terms of technology changing maybe the photography profession or in your career? I definitely think, as I mentioned before, the video um, aspect of things. Like, I think having social media is, it's made it so that video is more wanted because before it was like, yeah, you watch TV and there were commercials but there weren't, wasn't need for video all the time. And now, you know, video is something that we're so used to seeing everywhere. So people want it. Um, so that's definitely changed. Um, I'm trying to think, there's a lot more just content in general. So people, instead of just wanting like, you know, five stills for an ad campaign, they, they want more, they want behind the scenes, pictures from set so they can tell a story. They want maybe a behind the scenes video. They want a video, like a campaign video. They want the images for the campaign, but maybe they also want some additional images for social or, you know, I just think it's, people are really trying to figure out how to tell their stories on all these different channels. Um, and I think it actually like leads to a lot more potential work. So, so that's interesting. Um, I think also, they also want sometimes like the subjects to be able to share. So whether it's a model or an actor or, or like a real person, I hate that word, but I don't know <laughs> like how to generalize. Um, but they want them to also be able to share the images or the content. So they'll try to work with people maybe that 
that have a platform um, or even the photographer, like oftentimes I'm asked, you know, to share the, the content that we've created. So I think, yeah, I think it's definitely changed a lot. Um, but at the end of the day, like it's still the same thing. I mean, being able to take a nice image or a nice video and, and having your own, you know, your style and your vision. And that's, that's something that just doesn't change whether you're shooting film or you're, or you're shooting digital or you're shooting on an iPhone. I don't think it, it makes a difference. Um, and so with, you know, with what you've learned over time and um, the skills and expertise that you've developed, if you, if you weren't going to be a photographer, say in the future, how do you think you could apply or what other jobs could you use some of these skills that you've learned in what other kind of industries or positions? I think I've, I definitely think like, I sort of mentioned you, if you work for a brand, maybe in your, in their, in their marketing or social media, or, you know, just something that's creative where you're, where you're either working directly on creating content or you have a good eye um, or, or maybe um, filmmaking or TV. You could do something in TV and television, especially if you have a mm. good sense of video. Um, or, you know, with, with TV and stuff now, there's always behind the scenes people too, with movies, behind the scenes photographers. So you could definitely do stuff in like TV and film. Um, I think events for sure. There's a huge, you know, event photography business out there. Um, there's a lot you can do with that. You could, you could do weddings. You could do, I mean, that's all photography, but just different ways to sort of apply it. Um, I think there's a lot, I think there's a lot you can do if you can take a nice image or a nice video, or you have the skills sort of that we talked about with Photoshop or video editing, or, you know, there's, there's a lot of different need for that right now. Great. Okay, so this is a final question. It's kind of a funny question for photographers, okay. since I was one as well. And, but uh, since you don't really have a salary, or you might have a salary, you're, you're working for yourself. You're not necessarily being paid, you know, a salary or a wage. Right. Um, what kind of opportunities are there for like advancement? And I guess I'm, I'm talking about economically, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that within the photography uh, field. So a weird question a little bit then. Well, you know, I think it's like working for, it's who you're working with, right? So it depends on what type of photographer you are. Um, but there's always opportunity to do bigger projects or, um, you know, to work for brands that have bigger budgets. Um, you know, you could, it just really depends on what type of career you want to have. You know, if you want to do more like, maybe commercial work you can do that even in in film or video um there's you know there's not like i would say there's not like a straight path of like you look at a bunch of photographers careers i feel like everyone is very different um you know people nowadays are are a lot of photographers are building up their social media presence and they're they're monetizing that way you know, they're doing mm. collaborations or they have sponsorships through a camera brand and they're creating um, that, you know, there's, there's, there's a ton of different ways to do it. Um, and I don't think that like every, I think everybody does it a little bit differently based on, you know, the type of photographer they are or, or where they want to go with their career. I don't know if that's helpful. <laughs> No, that was great. That was a really good answer. I, I couldn't think of an answer, but that you gave a great answer for that. <laughs> so, okay, so we're done. Thank you so much. Um, my pleasure. My so, pleasure. I hope it was helpful. And um, yeah, congratulations to everyone. It's a strange time, but it's also a time that, you know, is exciting, you know, for you regardless. And, and you know, I think don't be afraid to get started even though it's a weird time, right? Like start creating and do your thing and, and take risks and you don't have to wait to start your next chapter just because things are sort of on a pause right now.